I don't know about you, DeMichael Cole, but I am getting sick and tired of hearing national talking heads spouting off at the mouth about what is best for people when it comes to leaving the city of Memphis. It is ridiculous to have all of these experts all of a sudden in socioeconomic struggles and all the other problems that come with being in a city, any urban area. That's why John Morant needs to get out of town. Get out of here. I'm going to jump right in on this on Locked On Grizzlies. It's ridiculous. You are Locked On Grizzlies, your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Because you know what I think of when I think of safe places? I think of Boston, Massachusetts. I think of all of the wonderful race relations that go on in the city of Boston. And I, you know, that's where John Moran should go. He should go to a serious place like Boston. Get the hell out of here. My name's Joe Mullinax. That's to Michael Cole. This is Locked On Grizzly. Sorry for being so fired up on this Wednesday, but that's just complete crap, Okay. And before I get deeper into the garbage that is Kendrick Perkins and anybody else that has that trash opinion, this episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is brought to you by Game Time. Big fan of Game Time over here at Lockdown Grizzlies. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Lockdown NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I will not be buying a ticket to any program that Kendrick Perkins is hosting. I can guarantee you that on this episode of Locked On Grizzlies. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Your team each and every day is proud members of the Locked On Podcast Network. Again, that's DeMichael Cole, my wonderful co-host of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. I am Joe Mullinax of Bluff City Media. And let's just, again, going right head first into the crap. Let's go. Is let's go. The nonsense that John Morant needs to be said. Because I got some things to say, place. too. Um, yeah, and you should, DeMichael. Yeah. And I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but you're from Memphis, Tennessee. I lived in Memphis, Tennessee for three years, and I think that my perspective on this, not necessarily as valid as yours as a native Memphian, but I'm someone who lived there, left, and the reason I left is because of my wife who wanted to come back to Virginia and start a family, be closer to our families. It had nothing to do with the city. Truth be told to Michael Cole, if I had my way, guess where my tail would be right now in freaking Memphis, Tennessee. And you know what? Instead of Lockdown Grizzlies, maybe you and I are hosting a radio show. Maybe we're doing something like that. That's how my life could have gone down an alternative path if I had stayed in Memphis, Tennessee. But I have chosen to support and defend Memphis, Tennessee from afar for a decade now. So when I hear and see just complete and total nonsense like John Morant leaving Memphis to focus more on basketball or to go and get away from the distractions that a city like Memphis has. It's complete and total stupidity in my opinion. And Kendrick Perkins, we talk about heel turns and how the Grizzlies have become the bad guys of the NBA. Kendrick Perkins once upon a time was one of the loudest defenders of the Memphis Grizzlies. He was carried the hell on talking about how good the Memphis Grizzlies were and nobody's paying attention to them. And all of a sudden Memphis isn't good enough for job. It's amazing how quickly the script can be flipped. And now you're looking at a guy in Kendrick Perkins and it's not just Kendrick. He's just the, the loudest right. voice of the moment talking about how Memphis isn't good for jaw and maybe he should get out of Memphis because of that. It's absurd. Desmond Bain exists perfectly fine. Jaron Jackson Jr. exists perfectly fine. Plenty of other NBA players have come through the city of Memphis and been perfectly fine. Here's a crazy idea, and I don't want to say John Morant isn't doing this because I think he is to an extent. How about John Morant just take accountability for his own damn actions? <laughs> Mind blown, right? How crazy can it be? It, it, maybe you don't blame the environment, and maybe you don't blame every other aspect of your life, maybe you just look in the mirror, Kendrick Perkins, and you say, you know what? John Morant's got some growing up to do. And he has done that. And Jaron Jackson Jr., like we talked about on yesterday's episode, has said, 
Jaws made some mistakes. He's got to grow. He's got to learn from it. I've got his back. That's my guy. The city of Memphis wants to support Ja in that way, but it's a two-way street. And the reality is a city like Memphis, they love redemption stories. They want to see Ja succeed because it helps Memphis succeed. It's all intertwined and intermingled. And the idea that Morant has to leave to have some reckoning about what his behavior should be is completely absurd. Uh, the thoughts are just roaming in my head of so many I can't, I ways can only to, imagine. to attack this because there are so many angles. You know, I, I grew up here. I, I left here and came back. So when I left, I finally got to experience what other cities are like as compared to Memphis and Memphis's culture and whatnot. And then there's the person who said it, Kendrick Perkins, who uh, quite frankly, if you 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 touched on how he was a, a fan of the Grizzlies last season, uh, you know, I actually, I like what Kendrick Perkins brings to ESPN with his energy and, you know, like he he's someone that people like to listen to, which sure. is why uh, I, I wasn't a fan of what he said. But Kendrick Perkins, once upon a time, the OG Memphis fans will remember this. He was committed committed to the Memphis Tigers. He, he was committed to the Memphis Tigers. And he had to call John Calipari to basically say, oh, I'm going to skip college and go pro. But he was going to come to Memphis had he went and played college basketball. So part of that was like you were one of the top players in the country in high school and – you are going to go to this city that 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 apparently you think is influencing John Morant uh, to make negative, you know, bad decisions. But let's go down that road right quick. Let's go down the whole John Morant road. You touched on the most important fact here. The most important thing is Ja's his own man. Ja is going to make his own decisions. I don't think it is fair to paint those type of narratives on the city of Memphis simply because guess what? There's a 15-man roster plus two two-way players. Mm -hmm. uh, John Morant is the only one who you've seen come up in these, you know, situations in, in, in recently. We're not hearing right. anything about Jaron Jackson Jr. And guess what? Jaron Jackson no. Jr. likes to rap. He likes to rap, right? Yeah. That's, that's what Memphis is music. known for. People, people are oh oh. I saw uh, you know, names being mentioned like rappers in Memphis and things like that. Yes. John Morant has a relationship with those people. But you know what? If you've been reading what's going on here, Moneybag Yo, uh, one of the most popular rappers from Memphis, actually reached out to John Morant and checked in on him and, and gave him some words of wisdom, gave him some words of advice. Because from a different perspective, but from a relative perspective as well, Moneybag Yo was once a rising 23, 23-year-old rapper who had all this money coming into his hands, had all this fame coming into his hands, and had to learn how to deal with it. And that's the angle that he presented to John Moran. So these people who you think, oh, this rapper in Memphis who's been in trouble for this, who's been in trouble for that, you're thinking of it from they could potentially provide, you know, a negative influence on him whole time. These are the people who arguably in the city have the best, you know, kind mm -hmm. of a relative experience to what he is going through right now. So I think that's good for him. Now, with all that being said, uh, it's it's very lazy to point some of these things on to the city of Memphis. Uh, you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but as someone who I grew up here and I didn't really go anywhere like as a kid. I went to a couple places, went to St. Louis and, you know, Nashville, a couple places, but I didn't really go anywhere as a kid. Memphis was all I knew. And then when I went to college, it was a big culture shock. It's like, man, and quite frankly, most of the schools that I went to, we're probably 90% black. Now I'm at, in a classroom that's pretty much 7% black. So it's like, mm. this is different. Then I go to Philadelphia and I, I, I notice the real cultural differences. Now, it, as opposed to the South, where you have more uh, churches than gas stations, <laughs> churches are far and few in between. You know, it, it's, it's oh, you got to go 15 minutes down the road to go to the next Baptist church around there or the next uh, Church of God in Christ church around there or or whatever the case may be. And it's sure. it's much more, you know, balanced culturally. It's just basically different. I don't want to go, go too much into that. But the thing is, you pick up on all these differences. But guess what? 
what I noticed that was similar, no matter where I went, is every city has a ghetto. Every city, every you know, major city for the most part. You in Knoxville, people talk about East Knoxville. In Philadelphia, people talk for the most part, they talk about North Philadelphia, just like we talk about South Memphis, North Memphis, whatever the case may be. Everywhere has an area that is poverty stricken, and those people are trying to do, you know, take risk in order to make things happen. You cannot paint that picture onto Memphis as if it is somewhere that is different from the rest of the United States in that mm -hmm. factor. And with all that being said, if you look at the choices that John Morant has been has has made, you know that that has kind of resulted in why we're having this conversation. When he was in that car uh, on the Instagram live video, the second Instagram live video, that was his best friend from South Carolina. That wasn't some Memphis guy that he's gotten attached to since he's been mm -hmm. here. When he had the first video, right? The first video was in a Denver area nightclub again. But one of his best friends, he wasn't out with some Memphis rapper and and, you know, who he got tied up in some situation with, you know, a Memphis drug lord or anything like that. These are all previous ties to his home. So that all points to this being a John Morant correction thing, not necessarily of uh, the city of Memphis, man. It. It's it's so much it's so much more I can say. We could spend thirty minutes on this, really, just kind of just going at all these different angles of what everyone's saying. But John, I'm not. I just I, I, that's something that really sticks to me because uh, I love this city. Growing up here is, I mean, it's the best thing ever, and just the the cultural impact it has when you leave Memphis. You start to realize the cultural differences. It's like you you don't hear people saying Maine as much. You don't hear them say, "Oh yeah, that John over there" and things like that. Like it's it's different, and mm -hmm. you grow to appreciate that. Just like John Morant has grown to appreciate Memphis and Jaron Jackson Jr., who we just talked about him on the Paul George podcast. He said he loves this city. I've talked with people close to John Morant, and this isn't a new story. I'm sure you've heard it, but this is where John wanted to be. He didn't want to go to New York City in front of all those big. Uh, you know, the Mecca of basketball. Like, imagine if all of this like... was happening to him in New York. Oh, <laughs> please. Yeah, imagine the media please. coverage. That... I can't wait to hear what Stephen A. and Kendrick Perkins would have said if this was happening to a New Woo. York Knickerbocker, right? Mm. Like, it's just absurd, to Michael. And I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. You know, Kendrick Perkins, if you ever want to come on Lockdown Grizzlies, we're happy to have you. Uh, I'm sure I won't be on first take anytime soon, but let me make it very clear that, you know, to reiterate what DeMichael said, DeMichael grew up there. I'm somebody that didn't grow up there. I went there as a young man who spent three years, three of the best years of my life in that city. It was a fantastic place. It has its problems, just like every city has its just problems. Like and some of those mm -hmm. problems may be statistically or more pronounced than other cities may have. But as DeMichael very well laid out, I was just more angry earlier. There, there is a lot going on in Memphis that has nothing to do with John Morant and vice versa. John Morant would be having these exact same issues if he was in New York, Milwaukee, Oakland, San Antonio, Salt Lake freaking city. All of these things <laughs> would be happening regardless of where John Morant played basketball because of exactly what DeMichael said. So keep Memphis's name out of your mouth and move along just like we're going to do on this episode of Locked On Grizzlies. But first, Game Time, a wonderful app that you should be checking out if you haven't already done so, a wonderful sponsor of Locked On Grizzlies. Buying tickets for your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater shows near you. You get images of seat views plus the lowest price guarantee. That means you'll always get the best price, and if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps, and you're all set. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed lord knows kendrick perkins shouldn't be giving john morant advice but who should in memphis to michael and i have some ideas next here on locked on grizzlies welcome back to locked on grizzlies i am your host one of your hosts joe molinax of bluff city media also write a little bit for sb nation 
joined by DeMichael Cole of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee, Memphis Grizzlies beat writer. Between us, you've come to the right place for Memphis Grizzlies coverage. Don't go to ESPN at this stage. They, they're very they're very fickle. Fickle is the word when I think of ESPN. Because remember, DeMichael, a year ago, ooh, we love the Memphis Grizzlies. Let's have a Memphis Grizzlies mm. day in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm. Oh, look, yeah. we love going to the Civil Rights Museum. All access. Oh, what a yeah. wonderful lesson there. All access with the Memphis Grizzlies. Oh, not convenient <laughs> now, is it? That's what I thought, ESPN. Fickle. Fickle ESPN. Um, Kendrick Perkins probably shouldn't be giving John Morant advice right now, at least not in my opinion. But there are plenty of significant Memphians, both there in the city right now mm -hmm. and abroad from the city, that perhaps could give Ja some counsel if they haven't already done so. Again, to Michael, you're more tuned in than I am. So maybe this has already occurred. Uh, but like somebody like Penny Hardaway, right? The head coach yeah. of the Memphis Tigers, Memphis legend. Yeah. Uh, Memphis legend for multiple reasons now, right? Obviously, his playing career, one of the best basketball players to come out of Memphis. But he's also become a coaching legend, not just at the college level. And I, I would say he's not even really that at the college level yet. He's become a coaching level lo uh, legend locally in Memphis for the way that he worked up through the middle school ranks, working with a friend who passed away. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to misquote the name, so maybe you'll have the, the full details. Des, Mer Des Merriweather, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I remembered the story. So Des Merriweather, yeah. uh, you know, that's how Penny gets into coaching, right? And then he worked his way up through, you know, middle school into high school. I think it was East High School where he was the head coach mm -hmm. uh, for a little while there. And then obviously he goes to Memphis and the rest is history in terms of what he's doing with the Tigers right now or trying to do with the Memphis Tigers. Um, Penny Hardaway stands out. Zach Randolph has been mentioned. Tony Allen obviously having his own legal troubles of late. Uh, yep. Somebody that could perhaps – lend a, a, a helpful piece of advice here or there for jaw uh, there's lots of options and again maybe you can think of somebody beyond those names but even in the cases of a flawed like zach randolph had plenty of legal issues yeah. like actually being arrested and actually having these things happen to him we mentioned tony allen a moment ago that they're flawed people but they have standing in memphis and they understand the culture of the city they know how to take it, not necessarily take advantage, but how to find the way to embrace and engage the people and get them right. on your side. Uh, maybe those guys, and maybe some others that you could think of that, that could be the ones that Josh should be listening to, not Kendrick Perkins on national television. Yeah, it's, it's two ways uh, I'm going to touch on this here. And the first way is uh, just from what I've heard, you know, I haven't poked on, this topic pretty much uh, lately talking mm -hmm. to people, but uh, as recently as a couple couple weeks ago and, and you know, uh, maybe a month ago or so, just talking to people about this type of subject, like who can reach out to Ja? I know I've talked in the past, you know, about Danny Green, you know, for example, mm. like the veteran player who was in the locker room. Uh, me and Danny Green had some conversations, and, and one thing Danny told me was that he wasn't here long enough to kind of get to those real conversations. He wanted to, to kind of, you know, organically let those things happen and, sure. and kind of get to know the guys. You got to get to know some guys before you go talking about, you know, how to yeah, handle your money financially. Deep. And yeah, exactly. So uh, that, that was Danny Green's approach. You mentioned Penny Hardaway. Uh, Penny Hardaway has said, you know, in the past, he has a pretty good relationship with T. Morant. I've actually seen that, you know, he has a good relationship with T. Morant. But he and Ja haven't connected as much. Again, this is recent as about a month ago. So it, I mean, mm -hmm. this could have changed in the last month. But as you know, last I poked around about that, that was Penny's perspective. Then again, we talked about Tony Allen some. Same thing with Tony Allen. Whereas you know he's tried to reach out to Ja. He takes his T Morant, talks to T Morant, but he and Ja us as well haven't connected as much on that level. So. There's an openness, I think, that has to happen from Josh's Josh side. He has to be receptive of it at the sure. same time. I think now, you know, that the second instance happened and you got the league office kind of probably uh, calling him and, and, and wondering what's going on, uh, he's going to be more receptive to those things. But I think uh, Zach Randolph is, is a guy here. And you know who else is in Memphis? But a lot of people probably don't know it. It's Bonsie Wells. Bonzi yeah. Wells is the coach. That's the name I was HBCU. hoping you would say. 
Bonzi Well, yeah, that's that's my guy. And uh, he and Zebo are very close. And I know right. that Zebo, because of his relationships with, again, the rappers that have direct ties to John Morant. John Morant, Moneybag Yo have really good uh, have a really good relationship. Money back, yo, is signed to Endless Records. Endless Records happens to be the record label owned by one Zach Randolph. So the connections are there. And Zach Randolph's best friend growing up in Indiana so happens to be Bonzi Wells, who also was his teammate, who also played in Memphis, who also now mm-hmm. coaches in Memphis for Lamont on College at the HBCU. So I think Bonzi Wells is a guy he and Zach Randolph can both touch on you know, playing in Memphis and, you know, being being NBA guys, uh, handling, you know, all these things, getting in trouble and finding your way out of it. But then there's another angle. I'm going to throw a couple other names out there uh, that I think can kind of uh, – he, he can kind of touch touch base on talking to. I think Derek Rose is someone who can kind of explain to him, like, look, it can be gone that right. fast. And, and I think – I say that because that's something I think Ja probably just, I mean, this isn't something that's really been told to me, but it's just outside looking in. I feel like that's his his approach in terms of not knowing what's at risk here has, has been a problem at times. I think at times you can make an argument and say, man, I don't know if Ja even knows, you know, what he has, you know, at risk here with, with some of the Instagram live videos. Right. And the, the tweets Sees and things himself like is that. untouchable untouchable yeah yeah so and, and Derek Rose is someone who can put those things in perspective for you then there are other players you know who've been suspended you know long periods of times I've seen mm-hmm. you know uh Ron Artest is someone that I've been told has tried to reach out you know John Moran. I'm not sure if they've connected yet but Ron Artest is someone who's tried to reach out to John Moran. that's someone who can can kind of help you remember he kind of turned his career around Ja has tried right. to get into meditation and things like that more well guess who <laughs> really got into meditation and, and things like that to the point where he ended up changing his name and changed his lifestyle pretty much. Mm-hmm. And that's Ron, you know, Metal World Peace. Uh, now I think he's, is it is it Metal World? What is it now? Um, I'm not sure. It's yeah. a lot of change. It's like Prince. Yeah. It might Formal, be a logo now. I'll say, point. I'll say formally, <laughs> formally Ron Artest. Uh, uh, shout out to him. Meta, Meta World Peace, Meta, uh, whatever, whatever it the is now. formerly pretty, known as Ron Artest. Formerly known as Ron Artest, great guy uh, uh, who, who has really turned his life around. I think all of those are good names. And these are people who we know have tried to or can reach out to John Morant. So uh, I think those are some of the names that come to mind for me. I love Bonzi Wells. I think that's a great, yeah. great name. That's a guy who combined with Zach Randolph. That just makes all the sense in the world to me. But to your that's point duo, that you made right? a moment ago, it's a, it's a two-way street, right? Like you have to be willing to accept help. You have to be willing to accept advice and acknowledge that you don't know everything and you know when you're 23 years old and you've made millions upon millions of dollars already you probably think you know better and this might be that moment where he's realizing oh i actually don't know better at least hopefully it's that moment for him Uh, we're going to move on to finish our episode of locked on grizzlies moving on from the john morant saga as the world turns and we're going to look to a player that we mentioned a little bit on the last episode of Locked On Grizzlies on Tuesday's yeah. edition. We got to touch more on this guy. Passing, we got to talk about the opportunities for Santi Aldama, Slim Spain, playing for the namesake in FIBA. We'll talk about that next here on Locked On Grizzlies. Welcome back to Locked On Grizzlies. I am Joe Mullinax, one of your hosts, joined by my co-host, Michael Cole, the commercial appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee. Again, so grateful for you joining us, subscribing, liking, commenting, rating, subscribing, All those fun things. It is appreciated by DeMichael as well as myself. And we're going to leave John Moran's ongoing situation behind for the remainder of the show as much as we can and talk about Santi Aldama. Because obviously on our Tuesday edition of the show, we talked a lot about Jaron Jackson Jr., the great day that he had on Monday being announced to Team USA. All these wonderful things were happening for Jaron. And we mentioned in passing, I believe it was you that mentioned it to Michael, that, oh, and by the way, Santi Aldama is going to be playing for Team Spain in FIBA. Wow, right? I think Spain is ranked number one in the world right now. They are. In terms they of are the number one. Team rankings. So Santi, probably not going to be a key player for them, end of the bench, end of the rotation kind of piece. But Spain is very good at seeing what the next generation of their contributors are going to be and trying to get them in their system. That's what I see 
with what they're doing mm-hmm. with Santi. I don't think he's going to go out there and try to play against Jaron in a championship game potentially. But I do think that he is in a position where he's going to learn, he's going to grow, get to understand that system a little bit better. And he, like Jaron, as I mentioned yesterday, he is going to have an opportunity to grow through practice, right? Just competing Mm -hmm. with the best players that are all there. They've chosen to be there. They had to accept an invitation. You know, it's not something that's being forced upon them. That's going to be a really cool thing for Santi. He has a lot of things to work on in his game, whether it's creation off the dribble, facilitation, kind of like Jaron. Santi was a defensive sieve at times, really struggled against the Los Angeles Lakers. So Santi, a young player, still has a lot of things to do to get better. No better place to do it than for, you know, the Spanish national team, one of the strongest international sides in all of international basketball. Yeah, uh, and I don't know. I feel like there's a role to be had maybe on this team for Santi. I, I, I think, you know, he has kind of shown in, in the usually how this works, if you can – the guys who are good in the NBA uh, find their ways on to, to these uh, national teams and, and play pretty productive roles. And Santi, you know, we can say he was inconsistent and all these things, but when he started, he was averaging double figures in the NBA. And, of course, this game is going to, I think, at this point of his career, this game is probably more tailored to the FIBA uh, style of play. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm looking for I mean Santi pick and roll with Ricky Rubio. That that doesn't sound sound enticing to you a little bit, Joe. I don't know. But okay, I, uh, I knew uh, I would attack him in the pick and roll on the other side every time down. Hey, hey until he, he swats Jaron and we're we're having a conversation oh. about uh the muscle that Santi's put on, but oh, all, all jokes aside. <laughs> all jokes aside, all jokes aside, all all jokes aside. With Santi, I'm excited to see him play with this Spain team because you mentioned it at the top, and we mentioned it uh, at the top. Uh, Spain is ranked number one right now, and they're mm-hmm. ranked number one not not on talent. Of course, duh, USA has the most talent, uh, but they're ranked number one because they're cohesive. These guys have played. I mean, rookie Rubio. I mean, he's been playing what he played in the 08 Olympics. Like you remember that? He was right. like a little 16 year old kid uh, playing true. in the 08 Olympics, and I mean, it's 2023. So he's been in Spanish Olympic basketball for half his life. And and that's the same for a lot of the players uh, in that organization and playing for that national team. He's going to learn a lot playing with those guys. I think playing with a point guard like Ricky Rubio, uh, playing with the shooters that Spain had, the creativeness, the you know the the I think the ferocity that the Spanish national team brings you. You look at the past games between Spain and the U.S. They're always right there. They're always right mm-hmm. there on, on Team U.S., whether it was 08, you know, 12, 16, whatever the year may be. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. I think there there's some big minutes for him to be had. I can't wait to see him potentially match up against a – you mentioned Bam Adebayo – against a Jaron Jackson Jr. Because, uh, I mean, Spain has what, what – Willie Hernan Gomez. They have, I believe, Juancho Hernan Gomez too. Uh, mm-hmm. Willie for sure. But he's the big yeah. bulky center, right? And I envision Santi either playing minutes at the four alongside of him or potentially backing up, getting some other minutes at the five uh, behind him. So I'm looking forward to seeing Santi. And but the most the thing I'm looking forward to the most is he's gonna play on a really good team. So Spain should blow out some teams if you say hey, he's he's a back end of the roster guy. If that's the case, then we're gonna see a lot of him in, in these blowouts, and that'll give him the opportunity to work his way up into the rotation later in. Uh, you know, the the uh, in, later into the tournament. But here's the thing. I think if Santi makes the progression that uh, I expect, not sure how much ex- progression you expect uh, from Santi at this point, but if he makes the progression that I expect, this doesn't start until August 25th. So if he right. progresses, if he progresses how I think he'll progress, he should have a prominent role on the Spanish national team. I think that he's going to progress from participating. I think he's going to get mm. better. From practicing, I think that this is going to be an opportunity. The behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. If he is playing significant minutes for Spain, that's going to be barbecue chicken for a variety of teams. (laughs) I just don't respect Santi as a defensive player right now. I think he's proven enough offensively that you might be Mm -hmm. exactly right. And again, and FIBA, not everybody on the team in the for Team USA, it's the case, but I haven't looked at the Spain roster. There's a decent yeah. chance that not every Spanish player is going to be an NBA player. 
right? Oh, so for you sure. mentioned for the sure. talent differential. But they, they got ago. some top players in the Euro League over sure. there. So absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. So and again, they they have more cohesion to their game. Like we talked mm-hmm. about yesterday, the idea of isolation ball that US basketball has played a lot over the years. You don't see, see a lot of that from like Spain. Right, right. A lot of ball movement, a lot of a uh, lot of set plays. So it's going to be a great opportunity for Santi to develop his game. I think it's a great thing that he's doing. And, you know, if he plays, that's great. If he doesn't, he's going to get lots of experience and practice playing against some pretty good teams. And I do think Spain's going to blow out a couple of folks. And worst case scenario, he'll get in in those situations. So kudos to you, Santi Aldama. Congratulations on FIBA. I'm so, sure, uh, you know, during those dog I'll days of you. August and September, we'll hit on – his production a little I, bit, I, man. I'm telling you, I, I'm actually I'm looking forward to it. I I really because covering the Grizzlies, uh, I think we mentioned it, but you, Spain has kind of been the most prominent, Absolutely. you know, team when it comes to you know Grizzlies following you know what's happening. Grizzlies fans following what's happening, you know, in right. international basketball. It's, it's been the Gasol brothers, you know, pretty much, mm-hmm. but. Uh, now having this Jaren potentially going against, you know, uh, Santi, we we haven't seen that, and this stuff is competitive. We we know it means a lot to these guys, and and I've touched on this in the past a little bit, but Santi, we were talking at the beginning of the season, very beginning of the season, preseason. Mm-hmm. You know what he told me? You know what he said, Joe? He said we're gonna beat us. That's what he said. Those were Santi Aldama's words. He said we're gonna. Oh. He didn't say we're gonna beat us. He said we're gonna beat you guys. Uh, Those are his words, not mine. Interesting. And he was talking to me. I know where I'm from. I'm from the U.S., Joe. So <laughs> he was talking about the United States. So sure. there's that. I mean, he's he's motivated to beat them, just like guys like Ricky, Ricky Rubio. I think Nikola Mirotic, who I mean, if he's in the NBA right now, he's probably a starter on some teams. So that's one of oh, those yeah. guys who he he chose to play. In the Euro League, just like previous guys like Rudy Fernandez and Sergio Lowe, like they have some guys who can come over here and who no, you're right. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be good stuff. I agree with you. I enjoy the FIBA tournament, and that's gonna be really cool to see play out in the later parts of the summer. Thank you so much for being with us on this edition of Lockdown Grizzlies. It is much appreciated as always. On tomorrow's episode, we have a very special edition of Lockdown Grizzlies coming your way. So Michael Cole is going to fly solo, and he's going to have his chance to shout or to, to say what up, Beck, if he so chooses yeah. in his best Zach Lowe voice. <laughs> it's going to be DeMichael Cole talking with Howard Beck about the John Morant situation, replacing Dylan Brooks, and much more. A really cool Thursday edition of the show, DeMichael and Beck. Make sure you guys are checking it out. I'm excited to listen to it, partner. Yeah, I'm excited for it too. Howard Beck is is a guy who, at this point, uh, I would consider he he's a great uh, addition, you know, to to lock mm-hmm. on. But he was a great addition to me when I joined. When I became an NBA beat writer, he reached out to me. Uh, we had oh, some really conversations cool. last year and during the uh, playoffs in 2022. And he's always made himself available. So I have a good relationship with him. I'm looking forward to, to getting some chat, chat some ball with him on Locked On Grizzlies and, and seeing, you know, what his thoughts are on some of the things that we in Memphis have kind of uh, focused on uh, around this team. I loved my episode with Beck. I'm sure DeMichael's will yeah. be even better. Make sure you're checking that out on our Thursday edition of the podcast. For DeMichael Cole, I'm Joe Molinax. Stay locked in, Grizzlies fans. This is Locked On Grizzlies, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure that you are rating, liking, subscribing, liking, commenting to Lockdown Grizzlies. Have a good one.